are the next great conflicts that you see on the horizon, the most important issues that we're going to need to take a stand on? Well, I think, you know, there's twofold. There's the cultural issues, and politics is down, as Andrew Breitberg said, downstream from, from culture. And so, uh, again, I would say we've got to uh, apply this fairness issue and, and use it to our advantage. The left thinks and talks with their head. We think and talk with our heart. Excuse me, the left thinks and talks with with their he heart. We think and talk with our head. We need to do both. We need to think with our head, but talk more from our heart. Mm. Share stories, share perspectives, both on our, our beliefs when it comes to culture, where I think we've got a winning stand when it comes to fairness, as I mentioned, on things like quotas or things like women's sports. But we also need to apply that to more complicated issues often, like the economy, talking about why uh, free market-driven capitalism is far better uh, than government-driven socialism. You know, a lot of people hear this, they hear socialism, and Marxism, communism, and we had a kid, a visitor actually to the Ronald Reagan boy at home in Dixon, Illinois, just a fifth grader that came with a school group. And one of our staff there was talking about Ronald Reagan and talked about how he brought about the fall of communism. And we're just so used to talking about that in really positive terms. And this fifth grader said, well, why would he do that? And our staff member was like dumbfounded. He said, well, what do you think communism is? He said, well, our teacher told us it's a way to help people. And I'm like, we just have to, to get to the heart of that and do a better job of telling stories. I think on the economy, we can't just talk in numbers, you know, dollar signs, but tell things. I'll give you a quick example. You know, if I'm talking to fifth graders, I might say, well, have you ever gone over to your grandparents and done some chores? Say, grandma gives you $10 after you rake leaves on a weekend, you come home and your parents take seven of the $10 away. Well, a fifth grader would say, well, that's not fair. Another kid might say, well, why would I even work? I said, well, that's what the federal government's been talking about. You know, before Reagan came in, in the past, and we're itching up to that again, you know, they top rate took seven of $10 out of people's pockets for the top earners in America. That takes away the incentive not only to work, but to invest. We start telling stories more than just numbers. And I think we, that really can resonate with young people and counters the push for socialism in this country. Yeah, they start to understand it better. They intuitively understand fairness. Exactly. Get to the heart of fairness. That's why I tell people all the time, you're talking to your kids, your grandkids, other young people. Don't talk at them. Talk with them. Share mm -hmm. things that are important to you. Share if you started a company. Talk about that. Share in ways that they can relate, and they'll be drawn to that. Yeah. You know, following up on that, on that point, we're going to have a lot of young voters in this next presidential election, which is shaping up to perhaps be the most contentious election in modern American history. It's going to be intense. And a lot of young people are going to be voting for the first time uh, for a presidential candidate. What do you believe should be the message of the folks running for president for uh, to young to the younger generation based on what you're seeing in the polls based on your experience uh, with the, the young people you work at uh, work with at YAF yeah well I think there's a, a couple key elements to that one I think not only substantively but but overall we've got to talk with passion and conviction about freedom and opportunity and what that means because that's really at the core whether it's economic mm -hmm. freedom whether it's religious freedom whether it's political freedom talking about why that's infectious. When you think about this idea, I, I, it drives me crazy when I look at the Marxist strategies going on in America today, particularly in our college campuses. I've joked about this before, but if we close colleges down again, it would do more to stop the spread of communism than it would stop the spread of COVID out there. Uh, but there's this, we don't take on that false narrative out there. They're trying to pit one group of Americans versus another. Historically, decades ago, it was based on class or income. Today, because that failed, they're circling back on race and sex and gender. Uh, in all those cases, in each of them, it's about pitting one group versus another to, to orchestrate power. I mean, the three people who set up BLM, the organization, are Marxist-trained organizers. They've said it themselves. You can watch it on, on YouTube. It's not you or anybody else saying it. They say it themselves to counter that. We just say, if you really want unity in this country, they're the ones that want to divide us. Conservatives? We believe, I don't care whether you're young or old, I don't care whether you're black or white, I don't care whether you're rich or poor, I don't care whether you were born here and stayed here your life or you immigrated here legally here a couple weeks ago. 
everyone in this country should have access to the same freedoms and the same opportunities that our ancestors blessed us with passing on to us as well. We tell it with that kind of passion and clarity. I believe young people will gravitate to that. Mm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense when I when I think of my our, our discussions with our own uh, teenagers. Uh, those are some of the concerns that they bring up is just freedom. I don't feel free to speak my mind or what I believe without experiencing retaliation. And fortunately, they have a strong mom and they take after her. And so they don't they don't mind speaking their their mind, but um, it can often be discouraging. Um, and so uh, I think hearing leaders who are vying for the mm -hmm. highest office in the land say, I'm going to fight for your freedom, to fight for your ability to speak freely, to think freely, and to work freely in this country. Uh, I think that is a powerful message. So, yeah, well, thank you for that. And, 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 right. And, and, and at a minimum, I mean, think about it. At the basic core minimum in our colleges and universities and our schools across America, you should be able to think for yourself. We should be teaching people not what to think, but how to think critically. That I think that's a fundamental truth that mm -hmm. people across the spectrum historically have been behind, uh, but but those who, who want power have tried to push that out of the way. We can make that, say at a bare minimum, we should have that. I think beyond that, I'd love to hear candidates at all levels, not just the presidential candidates, uh, talking about, hey, you know, if you're a young person, you wanna start your own business, uh, you wanna start your own career, you wanna pursue your own life, go do it. We're the ones that want to let you do it. As long as you don't hurt the health and safety of your neighbor, go do your own thing. Those on the left, those who embrace liberal ideas, those who are telling you all these things they think they're standing up for you on, no, they want to tell you what to do and when to do and how to do it. They're putting all these restrictions on your dreams. We're the ones that say live free. We want you to experience your own life again. As long as you don't hurt the health and safety of your neighbor, do your thing. Yeah, for those people who might be feeling fearful or cynical about saying something or taking a stand, what would you say to them? What are some meaningful ways that they can start taking a stand and getting involved? Yeah, a couple of different things. I, you know, one of the things we teach students, although I think it applies not only in the classroom on, on campus, but even for adults and retirees and others on social media, get some of the same uh, intimidation and alienation issues from friends who push away from them. Uh, a couple of tips we give students, uh, which is um, ask questions. Don't just come right out with you're wrong, but but it's really effective to say, well, excuse me, you know, like where did you get that from? Because what I've heard is this. More often than not, I, I think you guys have seen this as well, they really don't, it, it's hearsay. They, they, they've made things up or they get spoon fed things on social media that that fit their beliefs, but really are not fact-based. And so the extent of asking them to explain things, where did this come from? Because that's really not what I've heard, really is quite effective. Uh, the other part that I think helps that ties together with that is I see be an optimist. Don't just talk about why they're wrong, talk about why we love America. We're the ones that, that you know are, are talking about the shining city on the hill. We're the ones that understand that America is this beacon it's why more than a million people legally immigrate to this country every year. It's why no other country is even remotely close when it comes to foreign-born citizens. We have four times more than the next closest uh, country in the world. Tell people, what do they see that we don't? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, they see the truth. And so, to me, the best teacher I'm aware of in the history of the world told parables. So, to the extent that we can tell stories and, and re make those relatable, particularly the young people, I just think they really... It's a lot easier to tell your story, a lot easier to tell, you know, something maybe your grandma told you like mine did about don't spend money you don't have. Or it's a lot easier to tell about your grandfather who started that business and, you know, for years uh, had it in the back of the garage and worked their way up to where they're at today. Telling those sorts of stories, I think, are really powerful. It's why our best speakers at YF are, are those who've come from communist countries like Cuba or Venezuela or North Korea. And now they're here in America singing our praises.